everyone, it's Coach Kraft. I want to welcome you to tonight's Web Connections about Gardner-Webb basketball. I know you're going to have some great time listening to and sharing some, some really exciting stories about our great basketball program. And we really just appreciate all your support throughout this season. Uh, we're fired up about the Big South Conference Tournament in Charlotte this week. And we hope you get a chance to come out to our games and cheer us on. Go dogs! Hey Bulldog fans, it's Coach Alex. Excited to have you here in Charlotte and I hope you enjoy tonight's conversation. I hope to see you again courtside in the Big South Tournament. Thanks Coach Tim Kraft and Coach Alex Simmons. And good evening from Bojangles Coliseum in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is Web Connections. My name is William Downs, President of Gardner-Webb University. And it's my pleasure tonight to host this forum as we tip off the Big South Conference Basketball Tournament right here in the Queen City. Tonight, we're focused on Gardner-Webb basketball, our rich heritage and our big dreams. At Gardner-Webb, we love our hoops heroes. And with the arrival of March and tournament time, those memories of past glories and future possibilities come roaring back to life. And what a heritage we have. Over the years, our running Bulldog women's teams have beaten the likes of UNC, Purdue, and in Coach Alex Simmons' very first game, the Florida Gators. On the men's side, our teams have knocked off some equally big names. Kentucky at Rupp Arena, Clemson, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, DePaul, and so many others. And in 2019, after taking down Radford to win the Big South Tournament, our guys went toe-to-toe -to -toe with number one seed Virginia led the Wahoos at the half, and almost took out the eventual national champion in an arena that was full of loud GWU fans. What a history. More than 18 conference titles, so many hard-fought games, thrilling finishes. We're very, very proud of our student athletes, who they were when they played for us, and more importantly, who they've become since leaving our campus. To celebrate Gardner-Webb basketball, its past, present, and future, We've assembled an all-star panel, and I'm just very excited to introduce them and to start our conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome these five towering figures of Gardner-Webb basketball. So joining us tonight are Frida Lawrence King, inducted into the GWU Athletics Hall of Fame in 2002. She played between 1988 and 1992 and finished her career as the program's leading scorer and leading rebounder. She was a three-time All-South Atlantic Conference selection. She scored 2,202 career points and had 1,220 career rebounds. Beside her, Linda Cody Shelton was a pioneer in women's basketball and in women's athletics at Gardner-Webb, the first scholarship athlete in women's sports at Gardner-Webb and one of the first to compete in the 1970s when Title IX opened up opportunities for female athletes. Beside her, George Adams inducted into the GWU Athletics Hall of Fame. George Adams competed between 1969 and 1972 and finished as the program's leading scorer and leading rebounder. He was a two-time NAIA All-America selection and one of only a few players to have his jersey retired in men's basketball. Ed Cook, Ed Cook competed with the national powerhouse and nationally top ranked running Bulldogs in the NAIA in the late 1970s under legendary basketball coach Eddie Holbrook. Cook played in the old boss gym to the deafening noise of overflowing crowds. Gardner-Webb basketball was undefeated at home for several seasons during this time period. Ed Cook is now a member of the Gardner-Webb University Board of Trustees. Beside him is the young man on the panel, Christian Turner. As part of the first men's basketball team to reach the NCAA tournament, the Atlanta Georgia native was known during his playing days for his smothering defense, his accurate passing, and as a smart protector of the ball for the 2018-2019 Big South champions. That year, Gardner-Webb University was one of only seven NCAA Division I teams to go undefeated at home. Today, CT is a graduate assistant manager for the men's team. We're grateful to him for taking a little time away from 
scouting and practicing to speak with us today. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome these five towering figures of Gardner-Webb basketball. So it's difficult to know where to start because we've got so many questions we want to ask you, but we'll start uh, with this one. We'll start with this easy one, and I guess we'll, we'll work from my immediate left all the way around. How did you come to attend Gardner-Webb? What, how'd you hear about it, and why'd you choose it? Well, I'm from Lawndale, North Carolina, where I went to Burns High School, and uh, wanted to stay close to home. And I uh, was being recruited a little bit every, from every, everywhere, but I chose Gardner-Webb, and best choice I ever made. Awesome. So proximity was a trick there. Oh, yes. Awesome. <laughs> Linda. 17, going into my senior year of high school, I was an Inca sugar jet up in western North Carolina. And I came to Gardner-Webb to a basketball camp. And uh, although Peace College had recruited me to go there, unbeknownst to me, they ended up junior college championships that my freshman and sophomore year, but I had asked Coach Holbrook uh, if they had a team at Gardner-Webb, and he said no, but I promise you, because of Title IX, that if you come to Gardner-Webb, we'll have one by your sophomore year. And I fell in love with the campus while I was at basketball camp, and that made my decision right there. And so the rest basically is history. I went in every day, every week, if not every day, my sophomore year, are we gonna have a team? Are we gonna have a team? And finally he said, we're gonna have a team, and we did. And that was the start of Gardner Webb basketball. Awesome. It's George Adams, first memory of Gardner Webb, and what led you to say yes? Well, <clears throat> in 1968, I graduated from Kings Mountain High School, and we had a very, very, very talented high school team. And I'll never forget, one night we were playing our rival, Shelby High School, and I looked around the landscape of the gym and I saw this person. He was obviously taller than everybody else. After the game, I was introduced to Artis Gilmore. I went to Gardner Webb to visit and Coach Holbrook, you know, we, he talked me into coming to Gardner Webb and as she said, it was one of the best choices that I have ever made. I feel that I don't think that I could have gone any place in the nation and exhibit my talents the way things worked out at Gardner Webb. We're grateful it worked out that way. Ed Cook, what was the path to Bowling Springs? Well, I tell you what, I had a, I got two incredible brothers, but uh, one of one of my uh, brothers was a scholarship player for for Lenore Ryan and uh, got a chance to watch him play several games. And I asked him, I said, Jeff, if, uh, what would be the best program that you would play, uh, that you would select if it was you? And he had brought me to attention to Eddie, uh, Eddie Holbrook and some of the great players like George and John Drew and some of the other guys that you could uh, participate in, uh, participate with, and turned out to be the best decision of my life. I, I think I learned more about uh, uh, you know, life, basketball, sports, competition, and, and, and everything from Coach Holbrook, and it was just uh, an invaluable experience in my life. Sounds like we owe a debt of gratitude to Coach Holbrook. Yes, sir. Christian, it's not been that long ago. Yeah, it hasn't. It hasn't. I, I remember. How did it play out? I remember everything about it. Uh, Coach Kraft actually invited me to an elite camp at Gardner Webb, and uh, I, I performed, and he the next day I got a call from him. He offered me a full scholarship. So. About two weeks later, I heard some interest from other schools. I actually came down for me to Winthrop, Old Dominion, and Gardner-Webb, and I took an unofficial visit to, to Gardner-Webb, and I just fell in love with the, the family atmosphere that it was, and I was grateful that he accepted me when I accepted his scholarship. Outstanding. Let's stay with you, Christian, and then we'll reverse the order here. Let's uh, think back to, to one game, one moment, one highlight. What was the, what was the best? game day memory for you during your playing career? Uh, it's it's got to be the, the NCAA tournament run. The, the walking out to warm-ups was the biggest moment for me because it was pretty much a home game for us. You know, seeing the fans up there in the stands. So that, that when we walked out of there five minutes for us to go warm up, just seeing the stands and seeing the fans and seeing my family was, was huge for me. And that was probably a moment I'll never forget. 
I'll never forget it either. It was my second Gardner Webb game. I saw you guys beat Radford at Radford. I'd just been named president. Went to watch that. And went to Columbia. And you're right, it was a home game. And you guys were up, what, 14, 16 points. It was awesome. All right, Ed, favorite game day memory? I tell you, I, I was just a, a, a brand new freshman. Wasn't sure how much playing time I would get. And Coach, uh, so we went out and played in an international tournament at the War Memorial Coliseum in Kansas City. And uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, 18 format. And so in the finals, we were playing against the Czechoslovakians six months after they won the so silver medal in the uh, 76 Olympics, I think it was. You're playing the national team. You're playing the national team. And uh, Coach Holbrook told us before we went out on the court, he said the NAI folks said, don't let them embarrass you. So uh, it turns out that those guys were the biggest people I've ever seen in my life, but they couldn't run. <laughs> uh, and so uh, we barely beat him, and that was, uh, that was qu quite a victory. Outstanding. Good memory. Well, I have so many, it would take us all afternoon, but the one that stands out in my mind is... Gardner Webb doesn't play till Thursday, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were playing an NAIA NAI tournament in Hutchinson, Kansas. We were playing All Clare University, and they were good. And Eddie Holbrook was not used to losing. And <laughs> it, it, it was a tough game, but... We didn't win that night. We finished fourth in the tournament. But I'll never, ever, ever forget the intensity in that game. I mean, it was nip and tuck all the way, and they pulled it out in the end. But it was a, it was a well-played game. Mm. Linda. Like George, there were several. Um, I think as far as a personal game myself, we were playing my senior year playing Converse and uh, another senior, Pam Helton Williamson, she was the point guard, and she would feed it into me, and or I, I would throw it back to her. And um, I led the team in scoring and, and rebounds, and she led the team in assist and was right behind me in scoring. So we we played back and forth with each other. But that game, it was like the goal was this big. And it didn't matter what I threw up there, it went in. <laughs> and, and I ended up scoring like 36 points that game. And it was like, just give me the ball. You know, I just wanted to, to I, I had all that confidence going with me that game. And we always competed. We knew how good the men were when we got there. And we always had, we had that to live up to. And so, uh, although we were the Lady Bulldogs, we tried to run the court and live up to the basketball reputation that the men had already put in place. So we wanted to be that good also. Feed me the rock. All right, that was your day. Frida. Wow. Like everyone else, I had so many. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, That's why the jersey's <laughs> hanging, hanging in the arena. <laughs> but I guess when our rival was uh, Noah Ryan. Mm. And um, for some reason, it was always a close game every time we played them. So we went up one year, and, and their star player was like, I'm going to shut you down tonight. And I would consider myself humble. I never talked. I just let my game speak for itself. So uh, around and at halftime, she comes. She said, you got 15 points. I'm like, oh, do I? I, I, didn't, I wasn't keeping count. I said, well, I end with up with 40. So we went out. We was trading basket, just up and down trading basket. So it come down to that last shot. And she was like, you won't win the game for them. I said, I got money on it. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, coach set it up and uh, went down, took that last shot. And when it went in, and I, I didn't even realize it went in. Everybody was just jumping all over me and everything. And I looked up and she was like, I owe you one. <laughs> and, it was just, and I tell it to my kids now. And, I, and they was like, is that the only one you remember? I said, that, that would just stand out because Lenora Ryan was just such close proximity. You know, it was just a dog fight any time we played Lenora Ryan. All right, so that, that's the last of the we have to go in a row kind of answers here. We can just do free form now, but um, who wants to tell us what, what you were known for in terms of your best move, your best shot? Was it a, was it a sky hook? Was it a, was it a deep three? Was it, uh, was it throwing elbows in the paint? Uh, give me a sense of what, uh, what your, your fiercest competitors would say you were known for in terms of your, your best move. And then we'll have you display it. Right. Well, 
You know, <laughs> I see a lot of people, I meet a lot of players, even to this day. They say, they said, we knew what you were going to do, but Eddie Holbrook and the rest of the team had drilled it in us to where they couldn't stop it. I, we, I had a turnaround jump shot at the top of the key, and a lot of times, as soon as the ball left my hand, I knew it was going in. And we, we had practiced and drilled that so that even right now, I walk to the free throw line and turn around and I can't get the ball to the basket. <laughs> <laughs> I think mine was sort of the same thing. I would set up at the low post and not my husband then, but my husband now, he would, we would stay in after practice and he would, I would take off from the low post and go to the free throw line and do a turnaround jumper, and he would get on me all the time. You did, you did this, or you did, didn't do this, or whatever. So he coached me a lot, and that became, if I got from the low post to the high post, I could shoot that jumper right there at the free throw line. We didn't have three points back then, so it didn't matter. <laughs> Signature moves from anybody else? I don't know. I remember just uh, Coach Holbrook used to tell me, he put in a program one time, he said, I had uh, deceptive speed. And uh, <laughs> so I asked him what that meant, and he said, you know, Ed, you, you look slow, but you're really a lot slower. <laughs> so uh, I might not be able to tell some of the stories to these great that's players I'm up here with, but uh, I was lucky to be on the team. You've done your, you've done your part. Yes, Good stuff. Christian, you got a signature move? Um, I wouldn't know if it's a signature move, but I, I've had some big moments at the free throw line, like being in a, at Wake Forest, at Georgia Tech. Even in our uh, our championship game versus Radford, I've had to go to the line like under five seconds and like make really big free throws. So that's probably something my teammates would say or opposing coaches would say is a strength of mine. Pressure guy. Pressure guy. Absolutely. Oh gosh, that matters a lot. <laughs> oh, yes. absolutely. I really didn't. I just um, always had to do a pull up jump shot. And my coach would always say, "You never go in there and take a you no." Know, Try to take it to the hole to draw a foul. I'm like, why go in there and get beat up? <laughs> like, so just pull up, take, you know, nice little jump it. shot. And make it. All right, you mentioned Lenore Ryan as being a, a fierce rival. What, what about some of the others? Who do you remember as being the, the team just really? Our biggest cool. rival was Winston-Salem State. And there was a girl I played in, in high school that went from Morganton, Freedom High. And she, I had to play center. I was like a five nine and a half center, which wasn't too big. And she was six two and could duck the ball. And so we had to play them and I had to guard her. So Winston-Salem State was, it was, I was determined that she was not going to be the high scorer. And we ended up beating them once during the season. And I don't know how we did it, but. Felt pretty good. It was great. Other rivals. Well, Doc, you know, every team we played against, they wanted a reputation of beating Gardner Webb. Mm -hmm. So I can't think of just one because everybody came for us. And as I stated a few minutes ago, I still see people today and they said, I don't know what they were feeding you guys in Boiling Springs, <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> it so. was called stage jumps. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Christian, I'm going to guess Radford, Campbell, or Winthrop. Uh, Winthrop, Is absolutely. it Winthrop for sure? Absolutely, Winthrop. Why? Because we've, we've had so many, so many thrillers. And then uh, I actually don't think before I got there, I'm not sure if Coach Kraft had, had beaten Winthrop. And so it was kind of a big thing for, for my class, and that was the biggest thing was beating Winthrop, beat Winthrop. So we've had some thrillers that we've lost. We've had some thrillers that we won. So it's always really fun to compete against them and they – you know, they got somewhat of a respect in our league, and so it's really good to beat who you can consider a top dog in our league. And might we meet them again this week? No. <laughs> I would like to add that uh, our team was the first team to ever beat Winthrop, and we beat them soundly 20 points that night. It was a good game. But uh, Lenore Ryan was a tough one, man. Lenore Ryan was always tough. My brother went there. Rick Barnes uh, went there when I, you know, uh, when we went there. And uh, and then there's a couple guys at Guilford that went pro. World Be Free. World and, Be Free. And who else? Uh, there was a kid named David Brown. Was it David Brown? David, okay, all right, yeah. 
Very good player. Very good player. Also, High Point was a big one that we played back then. Yep. Oh, we still like to beat High Point. <laughs> Ed, was it more fun to win by 20 like you did or to hit a buzzer beater? That's a good question. I mean, you know, the greatest thing about playing for Coach Holbrook is, you know, everything, you know, you're in such good condition, you know, such good fundamentals. The, the, the whole part of it was good, but uh, did have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, at the Greensboro Coliseum to beat High Point. And uh, I made both front ends on it uh, wow. right before they took it out at half court and, and, uh, and shot it in, uh, in one with a lob. <laughs> but uh, it's just a win's a win. It's all good. That's right. That's right. Talk a little bit about your teammates then and now. You stay in touch? I do. Um, several um, teammates. We, of course, we got. Um, technology now with Facebook and Instagram and everything. So we normally you know, communicate and, and try to plan a trip at least once every you know, two years just to stay in touch because the time fly by so fast and we have our own family. And um, we had great teammates. I mean, when we, we did a lot together you know, we traveled and I was close to home so I would always invite them mm. over for dinner. You know, so it was just, and we kept that connection. And that's one thing that, I mean, I, I love you know, about Gordon Webb. I gained a lot of friends, and just and we're still friends right to this day. Strong family. Also, thank goodness for Facebook, because I am in touch with several of the players that I played with uh, the three years that we started the teams, and we do get together at homecoming, the ones that can come. But Pam Williamson, um, Elena Gray, several of them that through Facebook, we're mm -hmm. always telling everybody happy birthday and sort of staying in touch. And it's been great because of that. So there is actually some value in social media. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Good. good to know. Yes, I have contact with several players. Artis Gilmore and I talk every other day. Uh, the late Ernie Fleming, we kept in contact. But to go farther, at Kings Mountain, we had an outstanding team. But I didn't understand the concept of team until I got to Gardner Webb. At Gardner Webb, you ate together. You slept together. You did it all together. You fought together. And I think that that was one of the things that, that helped us during our career at Gardner Webb. We, we did everything together, and, and it, it just worked out really well. I want to add a note to that, too. When, we, when I was at Gardner Webb, we were a big family. It wasn't just the girls' basketball team or the boys' basketball team or the cheerleaders or the football players. We all hung out together, all the athletes and non-athletes. I mean, whether it be at chapel on Wednesday night or... Um, Quick snack and cheeseburger basket and tea. Or you can still get it. it we still had our it. times that we went out, and, and, and we were a family, not just a team, but the whole campus was a family. And you may not know somebody's name, but you knew if you saw them somewhere else, I think they go to Gardner Webb. You would know that person just from being on campus. I mean, it was that, that's what drew me to Gardner Webb. Yeah. And the, the support from the community. I mean, you know, when I first went there, I was introduced to people, and they were my, my, my fans, my go-to people for the next four years. I mean, get invited to dinner. I mean, everyone was so friendly that it kind of kept your mind off being away from home, you know? So it worked out really well. Small really towns well. love Small their heroes. Towns, right. They love their that's heroes. Right. Teammates, what do you... Yeah, I mean, remember? I, got a, I got a chance to play, you know, after this guy, but he did come and torture us at practice a lot of times. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, the, the friendship and the camaraderie that you, you have when you're going through something so challenging like that is, is uh, amazing. We stay together every year. One of the big reasons, I can't remember, 25, 30 years ago, we uh, undertook to get the basketball court named after Coach Holbrook so yeah. that we could – you know, keep the sense of uh, unity and the Gar Gardner Webb spirit and mentality alive. And it's amazing with the double dog days to see how you guys have taken it to the next level. That's right. 
and uh, how it's continuing to get better. So we're all pleased with that and uh, extraordinarily pleased with Coach Kraft and, and what his team is doing and the ladies' teams. That's right. Absolutely. Christian, power of teammates. Oh, man, it, there is so much power in a teammate. But uh, I, it's a, a lot of my teammates I still keep in contact with. A lot of guys I actually probably talk to daily, so that, that's pretty good. We, uh, you know, when I was there, we, we had a couple guys that really knew how to cook. So we always used to have like team dinners just, just in the apartment. So we were always around each other with practice film or just being at home. So I know a lot, a lot of the guys I still keep in contact with. Even we got a few guys overseas that can be kind of hard with the time change and whatnot. But we, we find ways to connect. And I'm really grateful, you know, over my four years there that I was, a, I was able to have relationships and build relationships that hopefully will, will last me a lifetime. How many times have you watched the documentary film about your season uh, and that magical I mean, run? Over, over 10. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Over 10. Me too. I, 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 truthfully, I probably watched it like three times when it, when it first came yeah. out. So it's, it's so, I, I can watch it again today. Yeah. But, Goosebumps. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I know the answer to this. Um, you talk about the strength of family, the strength of ties. Is it fair to say, or is it an overstatement, that Gardner-Webb, changed not just your time in college, but changed your lives. Absolutely. 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 Yes. 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 It was our family away from home. You're exactly right. And like I said, we supported all the te other teams, baseball, football, uh, the cheerleaders, the basketball teams. We all went to each other's games. And, and during that time, we also had two years that we had NCAA golf championship, NAI golf championship teams, two of them. So that was, I mean, we just all loved and supported each mm -hmm. other. I think that's still the case. I mean, I, I see, you know, we've got 22 teams and they show up to cheer each other on and that's, that's a wonderful sense of community. Um, so talking about change, how's the game changed since you played? Three-point basket. It's three-point uh, basket. You're right. It's full court for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Shot clocks and three-point baskets, but 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 what do you think about the kinds of players? Is it still as much of a team sport as it was? Um, you know, what do you think about transfer portals and name, image, and likeness? There's a lot of stuff going on in right. college athletics. Wrestle with some of that, that change since, since you were playing. Well, the transfer portal, for one, it's like you got a player one year, not sure if you're going to have him the next year. So, and with change, we know what change can bring. And sometimes it's a good change you know, at times, and sometimes it's not so good because of, you know, you try to build chemistry, and then no. all of a sudden it's disrupted you know, because of people transferring in and out. But we didn't have a lot of that then. But now it's, it's prevalent, very. I, I, I agree. Uh, the, the fellows that I ended up with at Gardner Webb, we stayed together two or three years, and I think that contributed to our success. I think that's what it was. Uh, but now we got different attitudes, and the game has changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has changed. When I played in the late 70s, we had just begun, Coach Holbrook had just begun getting us to start working out heavy with weights and things of that nature. And now I look at, you know, the most basketball programs today with what they're doing with weights and, and strength training and, and, and stretching. It's just, uh, it's phenomenal to see the progress uh, that some of these student athletes has made. So uh, uh, I love the game, love watching it, and uh, uh, it just inspires me uh, uh, every time we watch it. I think the, the NIL situation was that was something I didn't have in college, which is which is more recent. So that, that's kind of been kind of weird for me to, to know that guys that are playing when I was just playing are somewhat making money off, off of their likeness. You know, I didn't necessarily get that opportunity to do that. Uh, I, I think in some cases it's good. I'm not I'm not all in on it being bad or it being good. I think if you uh, if you take advantage of it the right way and use it the right way, I think it can be very beneficial for you and your family. So. You think the, the days of the four-year player are over? Somebody who's willing to ride the bench a year or two and, and get his or her moment? That's what I was thinking when, when we 
used to players came in and they may have been the superstar in high school, but they come in as a freshman and they're not always going to be the superstar and they have to bide their times and then some of them come right in and start. And anymore, it's like everybody wants to come in and be the superstar, play one or two years and then, and then go. And that's, that wasn't how we came into it. We knew we had to sit the bench sometimes. Sometimes uh, I was fortunate I didn't because I was on the first team, so I didn't have anybody to play behind. But um, as a coach over the years, you know, you see that in high school, but people in college don't seem to think that way. All right, so I got two more questions before we open it up to the audience, and I think we've got a microphone somewhere. If not, you'll just have to yell out. But uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Uh, let's fast forward to the two teams that are coming here later this week to play for a championship. Uh, they both got buys. They both had some nice runs at the end of the season. They each have three game. They're each three games away from a ring and a chance to go to the big dance. What have you seen them? What do you like about them? What do you think their strengths are? G give me your your expert assessment of our men's and women's teams here in 2022. Well, I've seen the women this year, and I saw them several years ago before COVID, but the change and how they're running the court and their knowledge and their team play together. I, when we went to hoops coming, I was very impressed with uh, the coach, the coaches and, and the players. I just, I loved watching them that night. And they're scrappers. They are. And coach got a technical the other night. She came up and apologized after. And I said, Coach, had you not gotten that technical, I would have been disappointed in you. <laughs> it was a bad call. It was a bad call. She's, she's fierce. I, fierce she's going to be. She's a great hire, and she's going to do a lot for the women's basketball program, I think. Imagine taking your first team on the road, first game, into SEC country and beating the Florida Gators. Yeah, how awesome. That's awesome. I, t I, I tell you, Coach, Coach Kraft, he has his team playing defense. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it, 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 it's very becoming. They, they're a group of guys. They seem to know where each other is going to be. They're well coached. And I expect great things from the dogs. Expecting a deep run. Yes, yes. We know early in the season we went to the Duke Gardner Webb game, and uh, mm. uh, that was a tough game, but I saw a lot of moxie from, from several players. G Gordon Sayers, number two? Jordan, Jordan Sayers. He, uh, the moxie he showed in a very difficult place to play in a challenging environment uh, made me an instant fan. So uh, I was really impressed. And then at the hoops coming game, just saw them continue to get better and better and better. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to have dinner with the team Thursday night, and I'm so excited for this weekend. So Christian, he, he just mentioned Jordan Sears, and I probably shouldn't um, criticize officiating <clears throat> on, an, on a recorded thing, but Jordan Sears reminds me of uh, the Longwood game. You remember the flagrant? Absolutely. Cost us a game. Um, I kind of hope we end up playing Longwood again. Yeah. Give, give us your insight of uh, how the team's trending right now, what the mindset is like. Are they, are they feeling it? Yeah, well, yeah, as you guys know, I'm, I'm a grad assistant, so I, I see them every day. And uh, the one thing that sticks out to me on this team is their competitive nature. I think every game, no matter who we're playing, where we're at, we love road games. We, we love to compete. So I think our mindset's in the right place. I think Coach Kraft is doing an amazing job with this team, you know, getting, getting guys in positions to be successful. So I think, we, I think we're ready. I think, I think you're going to see a team that's, that's going to compete on both ends. Like he said, we, we love to defend. We, we hate for people to score on us. So I, I'm really excited. I, I expect to, to be in that championship game, as we all should. So I'm really excited to watch us compete. We all have made multiple night hotel reservations. I'm just saying, we're counting on it. We're counting on it. You, you predicting a three-game sweep for the women? And that would be nice. That would be nice. <laughs> yes, that it would be would. nice. We're looking forward to it because these young ladies they work hard, you know, in and out of practice, and just to come back and see them play and, and they're well coached and just on both sides of the ball. I mean, it's just a joy to see them play. I would have loved to have had her for as a coach when I played. That, which is, 
for me, a great compliment to her because I would have loved to have played for her. So Ed, you just mentioned you're gonna have dinner with a team. I presume you're gonna get a chance to talk to them. Can't wait. So um, I'm gonna ask everybody this question, but I'll start with you since we now know you're gonna to talk to the team. What are you gonna tell them? You know, that's a, I, I need to ponder that a little bit. I mean, you know, we, uh, uh, we've been to, you know, several, playoff, the Gipper, right? yeah. several playoff games and, you know, you can give them uh, some positive feedback, but, you know, see what they're, uh, you know, see how they're, they're feeling. I'm sure they're well coached, well prepared, and, and uh, uh, just hope they don't eat too much and get, uh, get no. their bellies full before the game on Friday. Christian, can you, can you over talk to these guys? Or sometimes you just got to let them put the earbuds in and get in the, get in the zone? Yeah, I, I definitely think, I mean, they, a lot of times the guys ask me a lot of questions just because I've, I've played in four Big South tournaments. So the main thing I tell them is, is, is to stay poised. I think that's the biggest thing. It's going to be games where you're up 10. It's going to be games where you're down 10. And, and what you do in those situations is going to really make you a true winner when, when Sunday comes. And it will at noon. George Adams. And that would be the thing that I would emphasize. Just stay in the game. Don't, bad calls, just stay in the game, you know. Stay poised and, and play your game. You practice every day. You've played basketball enough to know that there's some dry spells during the course of the game, but just keep the course. Take, take the punch and keep That's going. right. I would say just go out and have fun yeah. while you're doing it. I mean, because you're really making memories and creating you know, different things as you, you know, run up and down the floor. But just go out and have fun because just to be able to look back on it, you know, years down the road or to show this and that to your kids, I mean, it's still joy in it. And, and, and they're going to do well. So they got to play loose to win. I think have so. Have fun. Have, loose have to fun win. and go out and just keep it simple. So I only got to coach at one level, and it was T-ball. <laughs> and I remember my big pregame speeches. I think those kids were just scared to death to take the field because I had them so stressed out. Got to play loose to win. What would you tell them? An example of what, when I was coaching, I had a girl one time we were playing. Uh, I was coaching at JL Man, and we, and we were playing somebody, and we were leading Anyway, they tied the game right at the end, and you talk about staying loose. I looked at her, and I put my arms, we called time out, and I put my arms on her shoulder, and I said, Kelly, you got a one and one. If you make them both, we tie, and we have a chance to win in overtime. If you lose, we're just going to smile and go home because it's been a great game. Don't worry about it. Just do your best, and that... She just smiled at me real big. Did and she went drain them both? Drain them, them both. And, and they see, you've got to play loose. They know what they can do. And they, can't not, they cannot look what happened if they missed a shot a minute ago. They've got to look ahead of what they can do now, at the, in, the, in the minute, in the moment. And that's what I would tell them. I would say, loosen up. You're going to go home and smile and be happy. It's not the end of the world. It's just... A big game, That's right. and we want to win, but it's not the end of the anything. You know, it's it's fun. Well, I'm fired up. Hopefully, the audience is fired up. Love to get some questions from the audience, loyal Bulldog fans. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, 75 to 79. Uh, only saw our team one time my four years at home. That bird high court defeated on the last second shot. Uh, Lee Floyd from Wake Forest transferred to High Point to miss it. But I, the guys who played for Coach Eddie, I'd just like you to tell me a, a real good story about, about the coach. Uh, something that just stood out about him, or a funny story, or just you know, anything like that. Well, I have a lot of them. <laughs> you know, and I Do we need to turn the cameras off? <laughs> I, I, and I was just telling you over by the window, it was Christmas, and all the guys, the guys from up north had gone home, the guys from Alabama had gone home, and I was just in there by Kings Mountain. And I got a call from Coach Holbrook, and he said, George, meet, meet me over at the gym. I said, oh, boy, I'm going to get a Christmas present. <laughs> he said, I got something for you. And, Terry, you probably can 
You know he was that way. So I went in, I went in the office and he said, go, go, go get dressed out. I said, oh boy, I walked right into this one. It was hard. It was very difficult with 12 or 15 others in practice. And he had me one-on-one. -on -one. And boy, we went, we went at it. And Frida, when that day was over, I was so happy. But <laughs> we had the Christmas holiday tournament coming up. And we won it. And, and I felt good about that. And that was probably one of the most instrumental things I know about Eddie Holbrook. He was a dedicated person, a true winner. And if you stayed around him much, you would, it would rub off very easily. Yeah, it, him being around, uh, uh, being around the team, and he, he was just so instrumental on not just my life, but I think about every player that played for him could teach you about hard work, fundamentals, teamwork, uh, all the things that takes you to be successful, That's right. being tough. And I think a lot of us have taken uh, what we learned on the basketball court and parlayed it into our work lives uh, in order to enable us to have success after Gardner-Webb. And uh, greatly, greatly appreciate for that. Uh, my uh, special thanks to assistant coach Ron Hooper, which was much more than an assistant coach. As the girls program, talking about Eddie, before, every week I would go in there, we'd have a team, and finally, he'd just grin at me, I'm working on it. And then, and then finally he said, yes, we are. And it was like, I was so excited. But then when we got the team, we always practiced after the men. And I'm not saying that the heat was cut up to 80 degrees for their three hour practice. <laughs> but what I'm saying is when we would go in the gym after they got out, it about killed me because I'd never played in an 80 degree gym before. And it got us in shape about like they got in shape, but we didn't have to do stage jumps. And they need to tell you about the stage jumps. Oh my God. What's, I never what's had stage to do them. jump, George? <laughs> you, have to, you have to know about uh, Boss Gym first. They, they, they had a stage and- Boss Gym. Boss Gym. You had to jump from the floor up on the stage and back down and so off and go on and go on and go on. And sometimes you had missed cue and you'd bust your scene. <laughs> They would come out of their bleeding, their say, shins. We drew blood today. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't matter if you were tall or the, the point guard. You would be jumping them just like they would be jumping them. I think Coach let uh, Georgia's team, our team didn't have to run this far, but uh, they let Georgia's team out by crest or where? It made you run back after a loss? Out, out on 74. Uh -huh. well, what, past the angles? Yeah. Like <laughs> and he made you run all the way back to Gardner Web? He, he, Ron Hooper, Coach Hooper would drive the bus, and Eddie would sit in the back. And, and he wouldn't get out of sight. He'd get there, and then we had to run and catch up. And, you know, it was hard. It was very hard. <laughs> But, but it made us tough. Listen, I've, I've played games, and at halftime, I knew I had them. I knew we had them, because they would be out of breath, and we would, it's time to go in for the kill right now, you know, so it, it, it really worked out well. Was it mental toughness, too? Oh, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, you had to go at it in practice, Doc. You had to go at it, it was tough. Christian, can, can we get away with that stuff anymore? Oh, no. <laughs> probably, probably not. He's saying, thank goodness I wasn't there in the 70s with a coach oh, yeah. I don't think kids could, could do it or would do it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the NCAA doesn't let you, and then younger generations might not do it even if you could. All right, other questions. We got a microphone. Introduce yourself. Ask a question. I'll be fancy and step up. Cool, uh, Tim Rebich. Um, as coming up as basketball players, uh, who inspired you and who did you look up to? Actually, I was a big time Dominique Wilkins fan. Mm. And- uh, Human highlight reel. He wanted 21, I wanted 21 too. And it just that, and that's where I got my drive from wanting to take the ball to the hole. So he was, just, he was big on that. Didn't have, didn't have much of an outside shot, but he was big on taking the ball to the hole. And, he, he could pop, no, throw it down, but I, I couldn't do all that. But, but I love Dominique Wilkins. In 1972, 
I was drafted in the third round to the Milwaukee Bucks. They had a world championship team in place. They had Oscar Roberts, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bobby Dandridge, Lucius Allen. And during practice, I would look down. I, I had idolized Abdul-Jabbar all my life, and I just couldn't believe it. After all the hard work, the hard work paid off. I looked down, and there he is. I didn't say anything, but I was just so impressed. And then we went on the road to play some exhibition games, and I got to play against the great John Havlicek, uh, Connie Hawkins, many other great players, Artis Gilmore. And, you know, it was a wonderful experience. I would say after college, there weren't a lot of teams, women's teams. So there were a lot of uh, opponents that I really enjoyed playing and watch. But after my college years, we moved to Virginia Beach in our mid-20s. And I just remember we would go to Old Dominion women's games. And we got to see a lot of good players. But, but one person that has stood out for me for years is Robin Roberts that's on Good Morning America. And to know that I didn't know back then that broadcasting was even a something I could think about doing. And to see her go through ESPN, and now she's so prominent and dominant in, in the news on ABC. And I'll be sitting there watching Good Morning America in the morning, and my husband will tell you, I'll sit there and say, I just love Robin Roberts. <laughs> and I just think she has been such a good role model for girls everywhere that she has taken her sport and stayed for a long time stayed with it through ESPN and then moved in. And she's just the epitome of gracious and everything. So Robin Roberts, she's a few years younger than me, but she, I look up to her. Great example. Yeah. Any other idols? Outside of my brother Jeff, who was a great player for Lenore Ryan, my idols were these guys, you know, George Adams, John C. Wright, Dave Borman, John Drew, uh, Jim Blanks, uh, oh, yes. all, all those kind of guys. And I was watching the uh, Charles Barkley on TV the other day, and they asked him who his influences were in his life. And he said, uh, he said three players, I think, you know, John Drew and two others. But he was really talking about uh, at his size, uh, to be a mid-size player or not against a 6'10 player, he had to learn the physicality to be able to go against those guys. So Charles Barkley was uh, giving tri tribute to the, uh, the John Drew, who was, uh, at the time, the youngest player to ever be drafted in Rookie of the Year. That's right. That's Pretty right. impressive. That's very impressive. Biggest player influence on you, Christian? Um, I think for me, it was, it was any, any small point guard. I think the main Spud one. Spud Webb. Huh? Spud Webb. Spud Webb was one. Uh, but the, the main one who's kind of like changed the, the small point guard frame was Allen Iverson. Just watching him compete, and I had to go back and actually watch like some old footage because I'm, I'm a young guy. But, but watching him compete and seeing him, I think arguably probably the, the, the best under six foot player to ever play basketball. So I think watching him, watching how he, he could score on, on all three levels, that was, that was something that, that I wanted to take from his game is, is being able to compete, being a, a feisty competitor. So. That was the main guy that, that I would say probably inspired me the most. Good stuff. We got time for at least one more question. Nate Evans. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Nate Evans with Gardner Webb University. So each of you are an alum of Gardner Webb in some way, shape, or form. Some more recent, some not as recent. Um, <laughs> What advice, we, we mentioned the advice you'd give to the players about the big stage and being out here competing. Uh, what advice would you give current students across the board about life, about school, about their career choices, things like that? Any words of wisdom there? I, I, would, I would say work hard. I don't mean just on the basketball court but as for your, your academics. I would say keep your academics up, concentrate on your basketball, and like Linda said a few minutes ago, it, it's a game. 
you win or you lose, but you got to go home, you know? So just keep a good attitude about it. I think uh, could be probably geared more towards student athletes. I think the main thing though, I, I wish I would have done too, probably is like get more involved. Like don't, don't go from practice just back to your dorm and just be there all night. I think getting more involved in student activities and, and seeing and meeting people and building relationships other than your teammates would be something I wish I would have done. That would probably be my biggest advice to, to probably more so student athletes. I think to the general public, the general population of Gardner Webb, for them to get involved with these players and the more you cheer, cheer them on, the more you're involved with them, it gives them a, a, a more fire. If, if, we could, if we could get that uh, auditorium, I mean the gymnasium full again again and have the students there and have things going on. I, I remember we first went to Furman and it was like, um, after we left Gardner Webb and it was like watching the, the tennis match. And, you know, in sort of getting the students involved and they would come in and all of them would hold up newspapers as the other team would come in and we always had things going on to get them pumped up about the game. And Furman had never been like that before. Oh. And, and we had to get them, we had to do things to get them involved and they got so involved and they feed off one another. So students, the basketball team will feed off you, but you will also feed off those basketball teams. And because basketball was so big back then, we would have a lot of people, students, come to our games, the girls' games, just because it was basketball. And so, you know, that's the thing with the student population is we need you to be part of our athletic programs, whether it be football, baseball, uh, tennis, golf, whatever. I know you don't go watch golf games that much, but, but anything that you can be involved with them, it, it gives you pleasure as well as you can feed off one another. The home court advantage is real. Yes. It counts. It can tip the balance. We need the sixth man out there. You bet. Just piggybacking off what you said, when I first came to Gardner Webb, there, there was not much to do. You've come a, you've come a long ways. Uh, you're exactly right. The community needs to get more involved with the players in the absence of things to do, you know? And I remember we used to lose some excellent basketball players because they would say, when the lights go out, there was nothing for them to do, you know? So I think that I agree with you 100%, yeah. Because you'll give to the fans, the fans have to give something back, you know. Any other sage words of wisdom? The only thing I would say is that, it, I don't know what the stat is, but I believe 99% of the college athletics are gonna go pro in something other than other their sports. Sport, right? And uh, they need to enjoy the four years, yes. give it everything that they got, you know, have fun. But uh, boy, take advantage of uh, that classroom time and, and because it's gonna pay off for the rest of your life. And to piggyback off what you said, if the teams get more involved with the people in their dorms or in their apartments, that will bring them out to the, to the games. And anytime you have that sixth man, if, if those stands are full with students, and I know when we were there at Hoops Coming um, several years ago, or maybe it was the playoffs. A whole bunch of guys were standing there and they had their shirts off and they had GWC written on their, their chest and stuff and they were so into it. And people feed, uh, the teams feed off that, like you said. So it, it takes the teams to be involved with those students too. Well, Christian, I don't know if you were one of them, but during volleyball season, I know Tim Kraft and some other assistant coaches went to a women's volleyball game, right. joined the students, Ditch the shirts. They had the GWU written on the chest, and the kids love that. Exactly. And then after after a big men's win, you guys go over and you know Tim hugs the guys and gets in the stand, and that that feeds off it each does. other. It's great energy. And that goes back to into the campus, and they say, "We well, you're at the game. Did you see this? Yeah. Did you see that?" And that gets more people excited. 
All right, I've got one last question, an exit question for the group before we close things out. Um, chemistry is probably the hardest uh, subject in college. I always found chemistry to be the hardest subject. It may also be the hardest thing to achieve on a team. Most successful teams always have star players. But more importantly, championship teams have good chemistry. We can always think about those teams that had the lone star that never went all the way because they didn't have the chemistry. How do you create that elusive quality of chemistry, belief in each other, confidence that together you can go to a place like Charlotte and win three games in a row? Chemistry, how do you do it? I would say you have to let some players know that you are a role player. I mean, we need role players. I mean, everybody can't be the star. But you have some teams where everyone wants to be the star. Mm. And that sort of takes away from that chemistry. But if you, if you let each player know their role, I think you go a lot further. I agree. Also, in coaching, I found out that I had to tell my players, I expect every one of you to score. If we have five players out there and every one of you score 50, uh, 10 or 15 points, then you're going to have your ones that get theirs automatically. They're just good scores and stuff. But I expect you to be a scorer too. And you may have a game you have three and you may have a game you have ten. But the expectation is if we all score, they can't focus on the one or two that are doing so that creates a chemistry also that the expectation is you all need to add to the points and the defense and everything, which causes the chemistry to be better because you're not focusing on one or two. Everybody's a threat. Yes. You know, by the time you reach this point, as far as your basketball career is concerned, you've played a lot of ball. Mom has written you around in the back seat in your chair and you go through junior high school, and you play AAU ball, and you play high school ball, and you're in college. So you know what's expected, you know? So you take those tools. You can be an outstanding score, rebounder, or just play the role that suits the team best. The coach will identify who he wants to score down low, down up high, but I think, more or less just working together, just playing together. At this point, you've played a lot of basketball. You kind of know what's expected. Were you good at chemistry, Ed? Well, you know, our chemistry, I, uh, I'd have to say we had chemistry because I can't say it out loud, but Coach, uh, <laughs> coach uh, helped us create a lot of that chemistry. But, you know, it's pretty cool when you're in a game and you start watching some of the guys you're playing against and you see some guys, you know, step up and, and take it to the next level. Like when we watch you guys play uh, uh, against uh, the northern state above us, Virginia. Virginia. And, uh, you know, that really stuck out of me. Or seeing, the, you know, some of the moxie. But when you see some of your players – step up and you go like, wow, that's impressive. I want to do something like that. And, you know, you get enough people that are, that are wanting to work that hard and, and uh, make that kind of contribution, that helps build chemistry a lot and, and success and failure to that extent. Right. And leadership. Yeah. So now that you're, you're on the other side of the whistle, Christian, how, how do you try to create that chemistry? I think, uh, and it's something we did when I was a player, I think have, having a deeper connection with your teammates Something we do every year, we take a team retreat and uh, we go in the mountains or wherever we went that one year. And we have a conversation, we get, get like a little circle and we, uh, we ask people, we ask our teammates just hard questions. We have to, Coach Crab makes it kind of mandatory for you to answer. You gotta, one of the questions is like, what is your biggest heartbreak mm. that you've had in your life? So having those deep conversations, which could be uncomfortable for some people, kind of builds trust that you, you know, you're willing to open up to your teammates which ultimately, in my opinion, I think builds a lot of chemistry on the court and off the court. Great answers. All right, folks, um, as we bring our discussion to a close tonight, I want to thank each of our panelists, Frida Lawrence King, Linda Cody Shelton, George Adams, Ed Cook, and Christian Turner. Um, it's not a presidential term, um, but boy, this was cool. This was really <laughs> cool. Um, inside of me is still the kid who idolizes 
basketball heroes. So this was just fun for me and I know fun for our audience. We're grateful for your time tonight, thankful for all that you've contributed to Gardner-Webb University. Your fierce competitive spirit is an inspiration for all of us. And to all of the 35,000 Gardner-Webb alumni out there who may be viewing online, thank you. Thank you for staying connected with your alma mater. Good night from Bojangles Coliseum in Charlotte, North Carolina. And as always, go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs.